Welcome back to Knowledge is Kings, guys. I am Kings, and today we will be continuing our building basic series. We will be learning to cut the tail straight on a roof system and add the subfascia. If you haven't seen the previous videos in the series, be sure to check them out, especially the ones covering how to frame the roof itself. Let's get to it. So the first thing I'm going to make here is a jig for marking all of the plumb cuts on the common rafter tails. This is definitely something you want to make when you need to mark a lot of plumb cuts. To make this, all you need to do is cut one board with a plumb cut that matches your roof, which in my case is 412, and then screw another board to the top of this board on the short point side. The lengths of each piece don't really matter. On my tiny model, I ended up needing to cut mine a lot shorter because my seat cuts didn't allow for a full 2x4 to fit though. I'll show you where to use it in a bit. On the roof itself, I need to mark the tails to the right length. For my model, the overhang is supposed to be 6 inches, but once I add my subfascia, it would be 7.5 inches. So I need to take the overhang minus the thickness of the subfascia, which is an inch and a half, so I mark 4.5 inches on two tails, one on each end of the roof. I use my plumb cut jig that has now been cut down to fit to take these marks to the top of the rafter tail. Now I could use a straight edge to connect these two lines across the roof so all the other tails get marked, but I wanted to show you how you would do it on a full-sized roof. I use a chalk line to snap a line across all the other tails of the roof. When you use a chalk line, make sure to pull it very tight so the line is as straight as possible. As I snap the line, I make sure to bring it all the way across the tail of the hip rafter, keeping the chalk line in line with the mark I made on the common rafter tail. With the other tails marked on the top, I use the jig to mark a cut line on the side of the rafter. To mark the line on the hip, I cannot use my jig. I need to use my speed square lining up the 412 hip and valley number to draw the plumb cut line. Alternatively, to mark all of these plumb lines, you could use a level. This is a lot more tedious, but it can be a good way to check and make sure you were using the correct markings on the speed square. For the side that has a hip on both sides, it's almost an identical process except I cannot snap a chalk line through both hips at the same time. I snap everything like I did on the first side, but then I use a straight edge lined up on the chalk line to mark the other hip. Once everything is marked, I can cut all the tails off. On the hip rafter, I need to set the saw to 45 degrees and make a cut from both sides. Once all the tails are cut, it's almost time to fasten on the subfascia. First, however, we need to figure out the height of the subfascia on the rafter tails. For this, I just take a scrap piece of the sheeting I'm going to be using on the roof and a small piece of 2x material and use them to get my height. I place the 2x material on the tail and the sheathing on top of the rafter and keep my speed square on the face of the 2x to make sure the sheathing doesn't go past the edge. I move the 2x up and down until the sheeting just rests on it. When it's where I want it to be, I mark the top of the 2x piece. This is the height I need all my subfascia to be. I take this new measurement and mark the tails of the rafters on each end as I did for the plumb cuts and snap a line across all of the rafter tails. Now if you had a really long building, I wouldn't try to snap the line all the way across in one go. I would mark down on the ends of the tails in increments of about 20 feet and snap each of those separately. Once the subfascia height is marked, we are now ready to install the subfascia. This is fairly simple. Now my model is small, so I can go the entire subfascia distance in one board. So for me, I measured from the hip to the outside face of the gable 
end rafter and added six inches, the distance I want the overhang to be. I set the board on the line Then I screw it in. If you have a lot more rafters, you can't make it in one board. Just make sure to end each piece on the center of a rafter. The reason for the snap line for the subfascia is to straighten out somewhat crooked lumber. For full size buildings, you would move the board up and down for each tail, making sure the board is on the line and nail it in, continuing that process across the entire length. Mine is small, so I was able to just place the board up there and nail it on without having to adjust anything, but it wouldn't be that way for a full size building. For the gable side, I add a block at the top peak that is my overhang minus one and a half inches. So for my model, it's four and a half inches. For the fly rafter, I can just measure a common rafter and make sure to add three quarters inch in the horizontal to the length and make the cut. Once that is screwed on, I can make another one that's the same length for the other side. As I screw this one on, you can see that there is a little bit of a gap at the peak, so my cut must not have been perfect. But that's okay. This is called rough framing for a reason. For finished work, that would be unacceptable, but for rough framing, it's okay. With that board on, the fascia is finished. Just so you know the terms, the tail end of the roof overhang is called the eave and the gable end overhang where the fly rafter is, is called the rake. That's all I have for this video. Let me know if during my building basic series, if there's anything else I need to cover more thoroughly. Please give this video a like as it really helps out the channel and consider subscribing so you don't miss out on future videos. Also check the description for any extra info I may add there and a link to my most common tools I use. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Oh, I like that.